SteamOS 3.5 is right around the corner. Starfield looks awesome, so we should answer one big question. Will it run on the Steam Deck? And should you leave your Steam Deck plugged in overnight? This video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Deck Ready. I am glad to be back in the land of Steam Deck after my extensive testing of the ROG Ally. If you missed my video, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm back on the Steam Deck. I like that thing a little bit more. And there is a ton of awesome stuff coming to it with SteamOS 3.5. So this one's actually been in the works for quite a while now. I think I've been hearing about it since like March, but in the background, they've been adding features to it relentlessly and testing it out in the beta preview channel. And we've been hearing from people at Valve for that entire time that it is right around the corner. The biggest rumor as to why it's taking so long is that the whole SteamOS 3.5 release on Steam Deck is also allegedly maybe going to coincide with the full release of SteamOS 3.0 for pretty much any handheld PC or a laptop. Uh, you can install a version of SteamOS 3.0 on your laptop or another handheld gaming PC, but the biggest drawback there is that so far, as far as I'm aware, it's only worked with AMD computers. And my computer, the Razer Blade 17, has a 3080 Ti. So I'm really crossing my fingers that not only do we get SteamOS 3.5 soon, but also that it does come along with the full SteamOS 3.0 release and that it'll work on NVIDIA PCs. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. As for what features are coming along with SteamOS 3.5 though, it looks like there's a whole lot to be excited about. The first thing that's being included is HDR support. This has been teased for a long time and it's been shown off on the Steam Deck actually with games like Death Stranding Director's Cut, but now it's actually becoming a reality. And I don't want people to get too excited for this thinking that like the screen on the Steam Deck is suddenly going to have HDR features unlocked. That's not what's going on here. The Steam Deck screen is SDR, but when you dock the Steam Deck with an HDR, HDR monitor and you're playing games or using desktop mode to watch HDR content, you'll be able to display an HDR from the Steam Deck, which is pretty cool. Obviously, it'd be cooler if we got a revision of the Steam Deck that had HDR built in or maybe an OLED screen. But in the meantime, it's nice to see SteamOS actually supporting HDR because I know my monitor, my main monitor I use, the InZone M9, supports HDR and it's always been a little weird having to output from the Steam Deck in SDR. I've heard it work works pretty dang well with the vast majority of games that support HDR. There are a few of them that apparently don't work so well with it, but that list has been getting smaller and smaller as this update has stayed in beta form. So I'm assuming that by the time it officially releases, we'll have total parity across the board when it comes to games that support HDR being supported by the Steam Deck's HDR. But yeah, two games that people have tried it out with are The Witcher 3 and Jedi Survivor, and apparently it looks pretty cool when you're in docked mode. This next feature is one that I'm I'm personally pretty excited about because it's a change to the overlay when you're on level two. So right now, the way it works is when you go to level two of the Steam Deck overlay, it'll put it across the top of the screen, which is pretty handy for games that don't run in 800p because you get those letterbox bars. So yeah, like when I'm playing Marvel's Midnight Suns in 720p and I have the performance monitor up, I can see it without obscuring stuff that's on the screen, which I think is awesome. But then when I'm playing stuff like Diablo 4, it covers up some critical information. So it's not like totally perfect and there really is no way to fix that. So what they're doing is just rearranging. So right now when you turn on the level two game overlay, you can see the frame time graph and next to it, it says game scope. Now it's going to just say FPS, which I think is a good change because FPS is a lot shorter than game scope. No one really knows what game scope means. So just like telling people, Hey, this is your FPS number right here. That's good. And they're also moving it over from the right side of the screen to the left side of the screen. So right now the way it's laid out is battery, GPU, CPU, RAM, and then game scope with the FPS and frame time graph. And now it's switching over to FPS, CPU, GPU, RAM, VRAM, and battery. I like that they're switching the battery to the right side of the screen because right now I instinctively hit the three dots button to pull up the quick access menu to check my battery. So it's going to be a little bit more intuitive to have the battery located where my brain thinks it should be located because that's where it's located on pretty much every device I own. On my Windows PC, it's on on the right side at the bottom, on my Mac, it's in the top right, on my iPhone, it's in the top right. You get what I'm saying here? Having it in the top left for the old performance window didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So it's a minor change, but I think it's a smart one. The next feature is the one I'm arguably the most excited for, and that's a saturation slider built into the quick access menu. Now, of course, you can get Vibrant Deck, and that works extremely well, but I've heard that in the past, Vibrant Deck didn't work on the SteamOS desktop, but it could have been fixed in the beta channel 
channel since I last heard about that, so I'm not totally sure. But regardless, it's nice to see these features that are plugins that are third party be built into SteamOS and then they'll have support across the board. And that's awesome. Because when they're built in natively, more games tend to work well with them. And I also saw that the new saturation slider default is going to be at about 50%. And that's a little bit more juice than what we saw before. So the screen is going to look a little bit more vibrant, which could not happen at a better time because the ROG Allies screen looks really good. I mean, even if you're running it at 720p, there's something about their screen that just looks really nice and crisp. And I'm pretty sure it's just because the saturation is juiced up a little bit more than the Steam Deck is by default. So yeah, it's going to be cool to have this saturation slider built right in with SteamOS 3.5. Another feature that was in the beta that I noticed is now in the official release of SteamOS 3.4.8 is what I think we're on right now is music control. So there's a little tab now in the quick access menu for music. It's got a little music note. Uh, so far, it only works with Steam soundtracks, which I own a few of, but I'm not really trying to listen to those all that often. I just really hope that we can eventually log into Spotify or Apple Music or, you know, some other streaming services that people use and then have that be its own music app. So you'll have the quick access menu with your music streaming services and you can do quick controls there by like switching music tracks and stuff like that or playing and pausing. And then the last thing, which is super interesting, is a new option added to the scaling slider. So right now you have FSR and a few other options, but SteamOS 3.5 is going to add in NVIDIA image scaling, which is interesting because of course the Steam Deck uses an AMD APU. Now I'm almost certain this isn't DLSS or anything like that, and I don't think we'll see DLSS anytime soon on the Steam Deck, but what this is, is very similar, it seems, to FSR, where it like runs the game at a lower resolution. So if you set the in-game resolution lower and use this built-in scaling, like NVIDIA image scaling, it'll use an algorithm to scale that game's image up. And I'm not sure how much better or worse it works than FSR, but in the past, uh, I've had better luck with NVIDIA's DLSS and DLAA. This video is sponsored by Morgan and Morgan. Look, if you've ever been in a car accident, your first thought probably wasn't to contact a personal injury lawyer. All that hassle of searching for one, spending hours in meetings, dealing with the paperwork, it just doesn't really sound like a good time. But that's where you'd be wrong. With Morgan & Morgan, submitting an injury claim is super easy. Morgan & Morgan modernized the injury law process by making it so that you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer, all without ever leaving your couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, and share medical records and bills all from your phone. You can even text your attorney and case manager without ever having to go into an office. When you're injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things you should do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is super easy. More than 3 million people have trusted them when they got injured in an accident. If you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com slash deck ready, or you can dial pound law. That's pound 529 on your cell phone. Huge shout out to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this video. Then I have with FSR or RSR, I'm not trying to be an AMD hater or anything like that, obviously because the chips and the Steam Deck and the Ally are so good, and the PS5 and the Series X. And even when you get a Windows PC, having an AMD CPU paired up with an NVIDIA GPU seems to be the best combo. I just haven't had great luck with FSR. And what I'd really love to see in a future update, if it's not coming in SteamOS 3.5, is an update to the built-in FSR to make it the latest version. Because you can mod games to use the latest version of FSR. I would just like it to be built into SteamOS because FSR 1.0 is way far behind at this point, even a year after the Steam Deck came out, just because it was already old when the Steam Deck came out. So yeah, I'd love to see that upgraded, but I'll try out this NVIDIA image scaling to see how well that works. That pretty much covers the biggest features coming along with SteamOS 3.5. Again, I really hope that these rumors are true and we are getting ever closer to the full release of SteamOS because the other thing that Valve said would release after SteamOS 3.0's big full on release is the ability to dual boot Windows on the Steam Deck. That's really the last thing they have to check off the list after SteamOS 3.0's release. And once we have that, I am definitely gonna upgrade my SSD again. Right now, the way I'm rocking it is I've got a one terabyte SSD inside the Steam Deck, and then I've got a one terabyte micro SD card plugged in, but I'd really love to have a two terabyte SSD inside the Steam Deck and then still rock that one terabyte SD card, and it'll just be a three terabyte Steam Deck, because at that point, 
point, I can split that one terabyte SSD in half, install Windows on one side and install SteamOS on the other. And before you comment it, I know that there is a way to do this without Valve's official release. I just don't really want to because it's tricky and I don't want there to be a difficulty where reverting it, right? Like if I buy this two terabyte SSD, split my hard drive, and then when Valve officially releases the dual booting software or whatever you need, I don't want to have any issues reverting what I already did. I'm just happy to wait because now I also have their OG Ally, which is like a Windows Steam Deck. But yeah, it's been a little while since we got a huge Steam Deck update. So I'm really glad to hear that Valve is still tinkering behind the scenes. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about is more of an opinion, more of a speculation type deal. Because I was at the Xbox showcase, I saw Starfield and I was absolutely blown away by it. That is easily beyond like maybe Spider-Man 2, my most anticipated game for the second half of 2023. So seeing that game in action and seeing how similar it is to Fallout 4 and Skyrim, the first thing I did when I got home is download Fallout 4 on my Steam Deck. And it's a really good experience. The only real drawback I had is that A, it's hard to get it to run at 60 FPS without lowering the settings and Fallout 4 is nowhere near the best looking game ever. So what I decided to do is hard lock it at 30 FPS with the Steam Deck's built-in limiter and then run it at the high preset. And I have had virtually zero frame drops, even in some of the bigger areas of the game. I've had no stutters, no frame drops, anything like that. And the high preset still looks pretty dang good. But my favorite thing to do with Fallout 4 on PC is mod it, obviously, because it's a Bethesda game. And on PC, you have the Nexus Mod Manager and it works great. So I was like, hey, I wonder if there's an equivalent to that on the Steam Deck. And there totally is. It's called Mod Organizer 2. And the way it works is once you install it, which is actually not that tricky. It's a little tricky. You have to get it off GitHub and things like that, but it's not super tricky. Once you get it installed, it basically replaces Fallout 4 in your Steam launcher. So instead of seeing that initial launcher when you launch the game from game mode, it'll just take you into Mod Organizer 2. And then you launch the game from there and all your mods will work because most of the mods I use are actually built into Fallout 4's mod store already and they're free, but there's one that I really wanted, which is called Autumn Overhaul. It basically makes the map in Fallout 4 look a lot like the fall setting of Fallout 76, which say what you will about Fallout 76. I think that map in that game is one of the best in the Bethesda uh, Fallout series so far. And if you're exploring New England in a world that basically went into the apocalypse on October 25th around Halloween, you want to have fall trees and creepy spooky atmosphere. So I really wanted that mod and it was really cool once I got it installed because it didn't tank the performance at all. In fact, none of the mods I use tank the performance at all. I have the dog companion at all times. I have uh, blood textures installed because of course I've got the backpack mod that makes you have more carry weight. I've got weightless junk. I've even got a couple of extra weapons added into the game and none of it has been able to get this game to drop below 30 FPS. So that's awesome. And that kind of got me excited thinking about the possibility of running Starfield. Now, of course, they've done a lot of upgrades to their engine for Starfield. So it's probably going to be pretty hard to run, which is also exemplified by the fact that it runs at 30 FPS on the Xbox Series X. But I still think there's a chance this game could run at around 30 FPS on the Steam Deck, especially if you lower the settings and also take into consideration that you're going to be playing it at around 720p. Or if it includes FSR, you'll be able to run it at an even lower resolution, which is good overall for frame rates. Of course, the bottleneck we run into with the Steam Deck is CPU heavy games and Starfield because of the way its planets are generated looks like it's going to be an extremely CPU heavy game, but I still hold out hope that we'll be able to play it on the Steam Deck. And honestly, I think Bethesda is going to do a good job with this one. They're bragging about there being the least bugs of any Bethesda release ever in it, which is funny and sad, but also good in the long run. And I saw the Digital Foundry video where they said it was running at a little bit lower frame rate in the initial trailer we saw at the Xbox Game Showcase, but they've got quite a few months until it releases. So I hope the polish actually works on this one and we get a 30 FPS locked experience on console and we can bump it up to 60 on a main PC and then also get 30 FPS on the Steam Deck. So will Starfield run on the Steam Deck? I'm not sure, but I'm crossing my fingers. The only game that you just flat out can't really run recently on the Steam Deck so far has been Returnal. And while that sucks, I'm consistently surprised at the performance level of the device. And next up, when I was scrolling through the Steam Deck news looking for something to talk about in this video, I saw this weird article prompt that said, can you leave your Steam Deck plugged in overnight? And then I immediately clicked on it because my favorite thing to do is start all my big Steam Deck downloads like The Last of Us Part 1, Control, like all these bigger games I've been downloading lately. I start them before I go to bed. I leave my Steam Deck plugged in and it's on pretty much all night because my dog loves to wake me up to take her out. And usually around three or four 
four in the morning, it's still downloading those games. So yeah, I was honestly kind of surprised to see in this article that you actually shouldn't leave your Steam Deck plugged in overnight because it has a charging feature where it'll let the battery drain from 100% down to 90 and then the charger will kick back in. So if you leave it plugged in all night, it'll just keep charging from 90 to 100%, which is ultimately bad for your battery's longevity. Now I will say that the Steam Deck standby is super good. I've left it for a few days at a time and I've come back to it with only a couple of percentage points dropping, but as time goes on and the battery life degrades, I could see this becoming more and more of a problem. So it's probably a good practice to not do what I do and just make sure that you download your games when you're awake and then put your Steam Deck in sleep mode when you're done using it. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you today in this episode of Deck Ready. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Shape up.